Hi everyone, welcome back to Carpe Diem Sailing. If you're new to the channel, my name's Marco, I'm a Sail Canada cruising instructor, and in today's video I'll be talking about navigational aids and how to use them correctly. Well, I'm back. Uh, thanks for all the support while I've been gone. I'm back on my regular posting schedule with this video. So every two weeks, uh, Wednesday 6 p.m. will be uh, the new video will come up. And uh, with all the footage that I got in the last few uh, weeks and months, I'm starting a new series on single-handing. Uh, and I'm going to offset them. There's going to be a single-handed video and then and then some general interest and then a single-handed. I'm not just going to run single-handed videos, uh, you know, one after the other, just to mix it up a little bit. But just want to say thank you very much for all your support and uh, for the uh, new subscribers that have uh, continued to subscribe, even, even though I haven't been posting. Uh, anyway, uh, let's get on with the video. As usual, there are show notes uh, for this uh, video on nav aids, which can be fairly complicated. So I hope you get something out of this and uh, do check out the show notes on our website for uh, different uh, little posters on the different navigational aids and concepts and things like that. Um, and uh, let's, uh, with that, let's get on with the video. Welcome to episode 39, Navigational Aids. I'm going to start off by dispelling this commonly stated rule of thumb in North America. Red right returning. I really dislike the saying for several reasons. First, as you see here, it only works for certain parts of the world. For reasons unknown to me, but likely similar to why we drive on the left and right sides of the road, the IALA divided the world into two regions. Region A, Europe, Africa, and Asia, and Region B, North America, Japan, Korea, and the Philippines. In Region A, when proceeding in the upstream direction, starboard aids are green. In Region B, they are red, hence the saying, for when we are proceeding in the upstream direction, we are returning, and starboard aids, which are red, are kept to starboard. The rule will only work in very specific situations as you see here. Entering a harbor, or proceeding upstream in a river. These examples are from my home waters in Region B, so starboard aids are red and kept to starboard when proceeding upstream. So exactly how is the upstream direction defined? In North America, it is defined three ways. Most generally, the upstream direction is north on the west coast, east in the north, and south on the east coast. This in addition to the two examples I've already mentioned, entering a harbor or upstream in a river. This is the rationale behind why aids are placed where they are, but it can be very confusing, and the only way to know for sure which side of a navigational aid to be on is to look at a chart. Here are some examples of how confusing it can be. In this example, when proceeding north in Ladner Reach, at the bottom right corner of the chart, you would encounter starboard aids on both sides of the channel. The same with proceeding east in Woodward Reach. Part of the reason for this is that there are several converging channels and the aids are meant for a specific channel. They are also placed where the heaviest commercial traffic occurs. Here is another one. In this example, it is obvious by looking at the chart that the deeper water is to the west of the starboard day beacons. The quick flashing red light furthest left on the screen is meant for the channel coming up from the southwest and once again is placed here due to heavy tug traffic through this passage on their way out to the Strait of Georgia. The flashing red light at the furthest right of the screen is there to serve the ferry coming into the BC Ferries dock at that location. Bottom line is, by paying close attention to the chart, you will know where the safe water is relative to the navigational aid, regardless of color or rules of thumb. Not only that, but also how close to it can you be? Here is a very common situation of a boat on the correct side of an aid 
but way too close. The second reef, the one the boat is aground on, to the southwest of the light, is actually about 600 feet away from the light. When in doubt, look at the chart. Don't guess. Okay, I think I've made my point. So now, let's move on to the navigational aids system and what the various aids look like. I'll begin by breaking down the individual aids, and then we'll put it together with a couple of short animations showing the path of a boat through the various aids. Let's start with lateral aids, so named as they are usually kept to port or starboard. In Region A, starboard aids, which are aids that are kept to starboard when proceeding in the upstream direction, are green. If lit, the light is green, their shape or top marks are conical, and they are odd numbered. Port aids are red. If lit, the light is red. Their shape and top marks are flat, and they are even numbered. In region B, starboard aids are red. If lit, the light is red. Their shape and top marks are also conical, but they are numbered evenly. Port aids are green. If lit, the light is green. Their shape and top marks are flat, and they are odd numbered. This is a bifurcation buoy from Region B. They are used to indicate two channels, one primary and one secondary. In this case, the dominant color and shape characteristics are starboard, so you would keep this buoy to your starboard side when choosing the primary channel. There is some green on it, indicating a secondary channel. So, if the secondary channel was desired, this buoy would be treated as a port aid and kept to port when proceeding in the upstream direction. By the way, the largest buoy in the center of this screen is called a pillar buoy. These large buoys sometimes carry bells, in which case they are named bell buoys. The one on the left is a cone, sometimes called a nun, and the one on the right is called a spar buoy. These are port bifurcation buoys, and in this case, if you were to choose the primary channel, you would treat this buoy as a port aid and keep it to your port side when proceeding upstream. What determines a primary and secondary channel is usually how navigable the channel is. The wider, deeper channel will be the primary, with some vessels being able to navigate the secondary. It is the mariner's responsibility to confirm that the secondary channel is navigable. These are called day beacons as they are usually not lit. They are usually used in confined waters. The two in the center are bifurcation day beacons and are used in the same way as bifurcation buoys. This is a fairway buoy, and it is kept to port entering and leaving a harbor, somewhat akin to the yellow line on a road. Do not be fooled by the red in this buoy. It is not a starboard aid. The top mark or shape is a ball, and if lit, the light is white. This is an isolated danger buoy. The top marks are two black balls. If lit, the light is white, and there is safe water all around the buoy. Once again, closely consult the chart to identify what the isolated danger is and how far it radiates from the buoy. Next, we'll talk about the cardinal buoys. These buoys use the cardinal points of the compass to indicate the safe water direction. The buoys are identified by their top marks as well as where the black is found on the buoy. The north cardinal buoy has two cones pointing up and black is at the top of the buoy. North is at the top of a chart, so the cones pointing up serve as a memory aid. Safe water is to the north of a north cardinal buoy. More on this when we get to the animations. The South Cardinal Boy has cones that point down, and black is found at the bottom of the boy. Once again, South points to the bottom of a nautical chart. Safe water is found to the south of a South Cardinal Boy. The West Cardinal Boy's top marks point to each other, creating an hourglass. So think of the West Cardinal Boy having a small waist. Black is found in the center of the boy with yellow at the ends. Finally, the East Cardinal Boy has cones that point away from each other, and black is found at the ends of the boy, with yellow in the middle. The last group we're going to talk about are the Special Boys. Most of the Special Boys have two orange bands on either side of a geometrical shape. 
The various shapes identify the boy's purpose. The hazard boy uses a diamond shape, much like commercial vehicles use diamond placards to identify hazardous cargoes. Or think of the double black diamond on the ski hill. The keep out boy has a diamond with a cross. Think of bars in a window to keep out burglars. The control boy has a circle shape and usually denotes a speed limit. Think of a number, the number zero. And finally, the information boy provides information to boaters and uses a square shape. I think of a page having a square shape. A few miscellaneous special boys include the mooring boy for mooring large vessels. A plain yellow boy is a cautionary boy and you will need to consult your chart for details. The red and white diver's flag indicates divers in the water and a plain white boy indicates a swimming area. By the way, the red flag with the white diagonal stripe is the most recognized diver's flag but signal flag alpha, denoting the letter A, is the official flag to fly during diving operations. Now, let's look at something a bit different, a navigational range. A navigational range consists of two panels, one taller and further back than the other. Once lined up, they trace a path through safe water. This is what a range looks like on a chart. And you can see here how it traces a path through safe water when crossing this shallow sandbar. They are commonly used in river mouths and deltas where the navigable channel is restricted. When approaching a navigational range, steer in the direction of the lower panel to line them up. I'm going to wrap up this video with two short animations following the path of a boat in Region A and Region B, both upstream and downstream. Here we see the boat with the fairway buoy to port. Since starboard aids are green in Region A, the boat leaves the green buoys to starboard. And here you see the cardinal buoys with safe water in each of the four cardinal directions, north being at the top of the chart. Conversely, when out to sea in the downstream direction, the green starboard aids are kept to port. Note that the fairway buoy is once again kept to port. In region B, it is just the opposite, with starboard aids being red. With the fairway buoy kept to port, the boat proceeds up the channel, keeping the red starboard aids to starboard. When heading out to sea, or the downstream, the red starboard aids are kept to port. In this animation from Region B, we see that the boat chooses the left-hand channel as indicated by the buoy to be the wider, deeper, more easily navigated channel. Once committed to the left-hand channel, any upcoming aids are treated in the usual fashion. In this case, keeping the red starboard aids to starboard. Here we also see the isolated danger buoy with safe water all around it. The narrower, less navigable secondary channel is on the right. And if this channel were chosen, then the bifurcation buoy would be treated as a port aid and kept to port. New episodes go up every second Wednesday at 6 p.m. See you next time when I demonstrate leaving the dock single-handed, the first video of a new series on single-handing. Thanks for watching. Until then, I wish you all fair winds and following seas.